for the seed. Thank you for the depth. We thank you for all the things you are showing us, the obvious and the not so obvious. Oh Lord, as we come again tonight, open our eyes of understanding. Amen. So that we can move another step in our journey towards heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, because we know you've answered. Thank you, Jesus. Open our understanding. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Tonight, as we look at the scriptures, we're trying to wrap up a little bit from chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 5 that we have gone through just to see a running theme through these chapters before we continue later next week on our chapter 5. And we're looking tonight at divine requirement for conquest. And if I want to enjoy conquest in my life, if you want to enjoy conquest in your life, there are things to follow. And we are seeing this pattern in the scriptures. We are seeing how the people that have gone before us how to experience victory. And this is so evident. You know, these chapters in Joshua highlight the underlying divine requirement of conquest. For example, in chapter 2, for Rahab, it was conquest over sin, conquest over physical peril and eternal peril. And the divine requirement, if you see in that chapter, was confession and salvation. She confessed and she was saved, repented and joined the people of God the Bible says she did not perish with them, perish, who believed not. Now, but by the time you come to chapter 3, Israel faced, you know, a flooding Jordan. And how are they going to cross over? How are they going to have the victory? For Israel, it was conquest over the flooding Jordan, passing through the impossible. And what was uh, the the thing, it was consecration and separation that God required because God told them, you want to cross the river Jordan, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders today. It was a separation. It was a consecration that they were to do, which gave them the pathway to that victory. Now, then they go to this chapter 5 where we are looking at. And later we are going to go to chapter 6. And before then was Jericho. They were the verge of receiving their inheritance. It was a conquest over the, you know, hindering and imposing walls of Jericho. And what did they do? Chapter 5. You saw circumcision there. Circumcision and sanctification was what they did to be able to gain access to the help of the captain of the host who came to lead them and to help them to overcome Jericho. So you see in all this, the running theme is always victory. But what were the requirements for those victory? For Ahab, it was confession and salvation before conquest. For Israel in chapter three, it was consecration and separation before conquest. And for Israel in chapter 5 and 6, it was circumcision and sanctification before the conquest over the walls of Jericho so that they could get into their inheritance. And the same way, even though that was for Israel, but it has not changed. The same thing is still what is relevant for us even today. If you are going to have victory, Victory over sin, victory over self, victory over Satan, victory over various kinds of circumstances and challenges that face us in life. The same principles will bring us victory. Confession and salvation will bring the sinner victory over sin, will bring the sinner victory over eternal peril and damnation, will bring the sinner victory over even physical peril because God will shield that sinner. And we want victory 
over a lot of troubles. You know what the Bible says? That many are the afflictions of the righteous, the righteous, the righteous. The Lord delivered him from them all. There is victory as we consecrate our lives, as we separate ourselves unto God. When the ways of a man pleases God, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Victory on the right, victory on the left. And as we move on, imposing walls of Jericho, strong goals that seem as if they will never fall, strong goals that seem we will never get to our destiny. But those strong, strong goals, as we get circumcised and get sanctified, they will be coming down in Jesus' name. And tonight, Amen. strong goals are coming down in Jesus' name. Amen. First point, confession and salvation before conquest. You know the story. Jericho, you know, Jericho and its inhabitants, they were marked for destruction. It was, and Jericho was the entry point for the children of Israel if they were going to inherit the land of Canaan. It was a frontier city. They had to conquer Jericho. Without conquering Jericho, how do you enter into the you no know, to the promised land? It's going to be difficult. So victory over Jericho was very pivotal, was very significant, was very important. We must win over that Jericho in order to be able to get over there. And yet Jericho was shut up. In Joshua chapter 2, the Bible says in verse 1, And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into an Allot's house named Rahab and lodged there. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in either to tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house, for they become to search out all the country. So these spies that came to come and get information, Joshua sent two spies to assess the situation in Jericho. The entire you know, city was very, very hostile and resistant. And they were on the collision course with Israel. It was only Rahab that received the spies with peace and gave them protection from the executioners in the city. Because if these people had been captured, Jericho was ruthless. They would be executed as spies, as coming to undermine you know, the sovereignty of Jericho. They would be executed. So what did Reba Ahab do? In verse three, in verse four, and the woman took the two men and he them and said thus, There came men unto me, but I wist not whence they were. And it came to pass about the time of shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out. Whither the men went, I wot not. Pursue after them quickly, for ye shall overtake them. You know, sometimes people say, Well, how do we reconcile Rahab's life? The question I want to ask you was, even as at this time, was Rahab saved? No. No, sir. This question was later. So what do you expect a, a sinner to do? To sin. And naturally we lie. That one poses no, no difficulty for us. That Rahab lied to hide the spies. What will a sinner do? Our salvation was later. This is a sinner that is trying to do everything to stay alive. He will do anything. Now, in verse 6, but she brought them up to the roof of the house and eat them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof. And the men pursued after them the way of the Jordan unto the forts. And as soon as they which pursued after them were gone, gone out, they shut the gate, the city gate. And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. And she said unto the men, I know 
that the Lord has given you the land and that your terror is falling upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. Remember when we read this a long time ago, very, 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 I mean, this Leah said, I know. She didn't say, I think. She didn't say, I suppose. She didn't say, well, I, you know, she said, I know. I know is a definite word. And she said, I know that the Lord had given you the land. But you know, some children of Israel, I'm sure that some of them didn't know. They are still saying, well, it's like a gamble. Whether we will, I mean, eventually take over the country or not, let us try. But they have been saying, I know. The unbeliever is saying, I know. But the liver is not so sure. Ah, you need to be like the heroes of faith. The Bible says they saw the promise of Aaron and they were fully persuaded and they embraced the promises. Even though they died in faith, not having received the promises, but they believed it. They embraced it. They saw it afar off. They were convinced of it. Come to your, your faith. Come to, you know, to your own Christianity in such a way that you are sure. There are still some brethren, they are not so sure. We are talking about heaven. We say, well, when we get there, we may discover that this heaven was just uh, manufactured by some preachers. They are not so sure. Some of the things we are talking about, they are not sure. But they have said, I know. I'm not guessing. I'm not thinking. I know that the Lord had given you the land. You are on the platform tonight. Do you know that the Lord has given you the land? Even though the land is not physically in your hand, but the promise is sure. Amen. And if an unbeliever can say, I know, you ought to know that God has given you the land. And let me tell you, abounding grace Christian ministry, we know that God has given Amen. us the land. Amen. Somebody say, but pastor, we are still few. Don't worry. We are capturing the land. Amen. Amen. We know. We are confident. We are sure that God has given us the land. And you are going to see how we're going to move. You are going to see, you know, in your eyes, you will see the land opening up. Very, very important. I know that the Lord has given you the land and that your terror is falling upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. Now, look at verse 10. For we have had how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when he came out of Egypt Egypt. and when he and what he did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side, Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom he utterly destroyed. The miraculous doing of 40 years ago is still having relevance in their life because Israel crossed the Red Sea 40 years ago. And these people are still saying the memory of it, even thinking about it, is still creating fear and dread in our hearts. But you know there are some believers, even what God did last week, they forgot it. And you are trying to remind them, when you came to Revival Hour the other time, and the pastor was praying for you, and a word of knowledge came, that this, ah, yes, 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 I remember two weeks ago, my brother, and you have forgotten. This is 40 years ago. And this woman said, we have heard. They were not even there. They were not even witnesses. We have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea, you know, for you. And they still remember. Oh, my brethren, don't let's forget the wonders of God. Don't let's forget the mercies of the Lord. Don't let's forget the miracles of God in our life. Don't let's forget. Let's keep it in remembrance. If unbelievers can remember 40 years wonders, 
How are we forgetting testimony of two weeks, one month, three months? It shouldn't be. The Lord Himself he will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. That's the level. And as soon as we had had these things, our hearts did melt. They were not there when Israel crossed the Red Sea. But they said, even the hearing that Israel did, our hearts are already melting. Then, how should the person who, who even experienced it, how should it? These ones are here, you know, they didn't see. They just had you no know, stories of it. That Israel crossed Red Sea, it was a miraculous crossing. So when we had, you know, there, there remained no more, any more courage in any man. Just, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. What a confession. Say, yes, in Jericho we have our idols. Well, let's forget about those idols. Your God is God in heaven and God on earth. He rules in heaven. He rules on earth. All these idols we are worshipping are just nonsense. I believe in your God, the God of all creation. This was a confession of Rahab. What a confession. You could see our faith in the living God, joining ourselves with the people of God, saying, even though I live in Jericho, but I don't think I belong to these people, even though I'm an outcast in Jericho, but I want to be part of you, what a confession. It was only Rahab that received the spies with peace and gave them protection for, from the executioners in the city. Look at in Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Why did Rahab not perish? Hebrews tells us, Hebrews tells us why she didn't perish. And everybody that will believe will not perish. Hebrews 11, verse 31, by faith, that's why she did not perish. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not. When, I mean, with them that believed not, the people that didn't, that got, that perished, they didn't believe. But she believed when she had received the spies with peace. The other people, they were at war with the spies. Let's capture them and kill them. Let's capture them and eliminate them. They perished. God says Jericho is falling. They didn't believe we will defend Jericho. Jericho is not going to fall. Ah. The Almighty has made a declaration. And then you said that uh, you are appealing. Who is your lawyer? Who is your solicitor? What argument is it going to put forward? And the argument will pass. God says Jericho is coming down. He says you are going to fight. Jericho will not come down. I think that you are just wasting your time. Jericho came down. They didn't believe they perished. But Rahab believed by faith. She didn't perish. She received the spies with peace. Rahab confessed that Jericho had been in fear. For the past 40 years, the crossing of the Red Sea and initial conquest over Sion and Og. However, the fear had greatly heightened now that the same Israel were in the borders of Jericho. It's no longer now we had you cross the Red Sea. The Red Sea is far away. Now they are right at your doorstep. What are you going to do? Now you are seeing them. Before, it was just news. Say, well, is the news true? Did they really cross the Red Sea? Yes, 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 yes. Well, but now, have they crossed the Vajoda? You don't need anybody to tell you. Now you can see. They are right there. And the event is going to happen right in your face. And for the children of Israel, that was what happened to them. And Rahab said, she was a witness. Now, what happened 
Prayer joined our Lord with God's people. She confessed that the Lord is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. She asked for a similar kindness as she had shown unto them. She said, I didn't hand you over to perish. I didn't hand you over to be executed. You also show me the same kindness. Give me a token that as I rescued you, you will rescue me. As I have not betrayed you, you will not betray me. As I have not, I mean, put you forward for execution, you will not put me forward for execution. Rea took, you know, an oath with those uh, people. And what they said, what they say, as she had preserved them from physical peril, they should also preserve her and her family from physical peril. That was the first thing. The spies told her that what you have done to us, we will do to you. Only if you keep this, our business, a secret. You don't talk about it. You don't tell people. You don't reveal what we have come to do. On that basis, we can keep the covenant. But if you open your mouth and you reveal everything, that covenant is completely annulled. So the spies reply that the kindness requested by Rhea will be based on continued faithfulness. So what do we learn from here? Salvation from physical perils as well as from spiritual ruin were granted to Rahab and her family. They experienced conquest over sin. They experienced conquest over death. They experienced conquest over physical ruin. I mean, physical peril as well as spiritual ruin because she believed. Confession and salvation. In James chapter 2, James chapter 2, James chapter 2, verse 25, talking about Rahab. James chapter 2, verse 25. It says, Likewise also, was not Rahab the allot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? That because she showed mercy and she received the spies with peace, God also showed her mercy and gave her peace. You know what the Bible says? Blessed are the merciful. Finish it. For they shall obtain mercy. Rahab showed mercy and God returned that mercy on her. As you show mercy, God will show you mercy. Amen. Show kindness. God will show you kindness. Amen. The law of the scriptures. Bible says here that she was justified by works. The message she showed was returned back unto her. She received the messengers and she sent them another way. She told them how to escape danger. And God also made a way for her to escape danger. God will make a way for you to escape danger in Jesus' name. Amen. So, number one, if we're going to conquer sin, conquer iniquity, conquer physical peril, conquer spiritual ruin, confession and salvation is important. The Bible says, he that confesses his sin shall have mercy, but whosoever covereth the sins shall not prosper. Very important. If we're going to prosper, we need to confess. We need to repent. We need to abandon sin and we need to return to God and acknowledge that God is God in heaven and on earth beneath. That his will will be done on earth as is his will is done in heaven because he rules over all. Mm -hmm. That was what uh, Rehab was saying. That will be done on earth as it is done in heaven because you are God in heaven uh -huh. and on in, in heaven above and on earth beneath. So we must do your will. We are ready to do your will. Confession and salvation always comes before conquest. And if you're on the platform tonight, are you saved? If you have been saved, are you still in the faith? Paul said, examine yourself to ensure that you are still in the faith. Otherwise, you have become reprobate. Are you still in the faith? 
Are you still fresh in the faith? Confession and salvation, very important before we can experience victory in our life. Number two, in Joshua chapter three, Joshua chapter three, I read from verse, I read from verse five. Joshua chapter three, verse five. And Joshua said unto the people, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Verse 17. And the priest that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan. And all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. Okay. God did the miracle. River Jordan parted and the people crossed over. But before that time, God told them, sanctify yourselves, for the Lord will do wonders among you tomorrow. When the Bible talks about sanctification, you know, sometimes people don't understand. The word sanctification, there are two meanings. The Bible says, when you sanctify yourself, it's talking about separate yourself unto God for his use. When God sanctifies you, that is internal work of cleansing you, purity from the heart. The human sanctification and the divine sanctification are different. The human sanctification is a case of consecration. Is for example, when you sanctify a bowl, you know, and you say this bowl, I'm going to use it to do this. You separate it for that purpose. That's sanctification. But also you can cleanse it and make it you know, suitable for that. Separating it and cleansing it, the two are called sanctification, but sanctification in different contexts. So these people, God was telling them, sanctify yourself, separate yourself from sin, consecrate yourself unto the Lord. You know, that's what he was saying, consecration and separation before conquest. And God told them, sanctify yourselves. Unto in verse 5, in verse 5 of Joshua chapter 3, God told them to sanctify themselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Consecration and separation must come before conquest. Many of us want to experience the wonders of the Lord. Are you consecrating? And consecration is beyond salvation. These people, they were already God's people. These people were already saved. These people were already on their way to Canaan. And yet Joshua said, yes, you are God's people. You are already saved. But sanctify yourselves. Consecrate yourself. Separate yourself you know, unto the Lord. For the Lord wants to do wonders among you. Very, very important. River Jordan was flooding. And River Jordan was overflowing. And yet it was time for Israel to cross over into their inheritance. Streaming was not an option for them because the strong currents will wash people away. Now, not only that, they had no boats. They had no ships to cross. So that also was not possible. How then shall they cross? How shall they walk through the impossible? How shall they get to the other side? Weather may look very, very difficult for man, but with God, all things are possible. Yes, we can swim across and get to the other side, but at this time, not possible. We can take a boat and row, we can take a ship and sail and get to the other side, but at this time, it's not possible. And yet, River Jordan is overflowing. What are we going to do? You need a miracle to be able to cross over and God is a God of possibility. He's a God that specializes in giving us miracle in the, you know, when we are in the first place of our life. God had a solution. River Jordan will split like the Red Sea. At the point of Israel crossing, the crossing will be miraculous. Maybe Amen. you this is like that, and the uh, things are difficult. You know, I had a missionary story. Recently, 
some of the missionaries, there was a missionary conference that took place recently. And some missionaries that are already about 71, 70, I mean, over 70, they were giving testimony to a lot of people. And a particular missionary said there was a time they went to go and evangelize in a dangerous place, very, very dangerous. But they were to get to their base that night. But the road was very dangerous. But they said they must get back to their base that night. And they left very late. So as they left and they were going, as, as they, were, they were traveling, they said they got to a point when it started to be dark. An old man just waved them down, waved them down. They wanted to pass, but they decided, no, let's, let's hear what the old man wants to say. So they slowed down in their car. They listened to the old man. Then the old man asked them, where are you going at this time of the night, at this time of day? They said, we are trying to get to that place. Ah, the old man said, this is a dangerous road. This is very, very perilous journey. But let me give you one advice. As you are going now, in about one mile, in about one mile, look at your right. You are going to see a very big road. Turn to the right, follow that road. At the end of that road, you will see some ships. Join the ship, it will take you to where you are going. And true, true, they, they, they wound up. Then they started going. About one mile later, they found this like an highway <laughs> on the right. They turned their car into that highway. They moved. They got to the end, very end of the highway. They saw a big arbor, very, very big arbor. So eventually, they paid. They entered the ship. The, their car also, they got it on the, on the ship, and then the ship moved. And uh, within 30 minutes, they got to where they were going. A journey that was meant to be over five hours, they got there in 30 minutes. So when they got there, people were already anxious for them. Say, ah, you are very early. They said, we left, it's not quite long. Then how come you have just come? We, because we have been worried about you. They said, we saw, we saw an old man. He directed us and said, we should follow a particular path. We saw that path, I mean, the road we followed. At the end of the road, we there was a big uh, arbor. You know, we entered the ship and the ship brought us here. Somebody that was familiar, who is a, 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 a citizen of that country said, there are no harbors here. There is no ship here. He brought out the map, the geographical map. Where did you see you saw road? Where did you see you saw harbor? There is no river here. There is no sea here. You know what has happened? It was a miraculous transportation. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. This was, I mean, we are talking about Nigerians experienced this on the mission field. Because this conference that I'm talking about is a conference that just happened in Nigeria you know, a missionary conference. God can make a, a way. It was then that they realized, so that road, the road didn't exist. Those ship, the ship doesn't exist. The, 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 the sea, the sea does not exist. So how come? We saw people, we saw ship, we entered ship. There was the sailor. There were people we talked with. Done. Angelic visitation and transportation. My brothers, hmm. We need to understand. And you know, I've told you once, I've experienced it once in Italy. I told the brethren. I called the brethren in Napoli one time. We went to a place to go and look at a property. I also traveled from Rome. I took a bus. Now, when we finished looking at the property, they asked me, I said, Pastor, are you okay? They drove. I said, I'm okay. And they went. It was after they left, I saw that number one, I didn't even have my phone on me. I left it at home. Number two, I had no money on me. 
how am I going to get back to Rome? I cannot enter bus without paying. And I was looking up, looking down. I can't contact the brethren. Because even if somebody gave me the phone, I don't know their phone numbers in my head. Their phone numbers are inside the phone. So how do I contact them? Very difficult. All of a sudden, somebody just came by my cell, Amico. And I looked at him. He looked like an Arab. Where are you going? He said, I'm going to Rome. Hey, but why are you here? I said, I, I don't have any money. He said, come, 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 come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we crossed the road. He bought a ticket for himself. And then he gave them money to also give me a ticket. So immediately he got his own ticket and paid the money. Then he paid my own. Then he left. Then as I got my ticket, I turned. I looked around. The place where we were was a big place. Only the person selling the ticket and the, no other person, very expensive of land. I couldn't see that individual disappeared completely. It's not that, it's, a, it's an open public place. It's not that maybe there were no people there waiting for the boss. Do you know, until the boss came, I was shaking. Was an angelic visitation. Ticket was bought for me. I couldn't see till I got to back to Rome. I was thinking they've been talking about this. This is experiencing angelic visitation. I told the brethren in Rome. So, my brethren, when you want to cross River Jordan and there you cannot swim, the conditions are too dangerous. There is no boat, and yet you must cross. God will give you a miracle. Amen. We'll go through the impossible in Jesus' name. Amen. And we must know that these miracles are still for today. You know, when I heard the testimony of these missionaries, I was glad. Because many times we are reading these things in the Bible as if they are just stories. No, they can happen to you. They can happen to me. When we are at the crossroad and there is no other solution, God will give us solutions in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. They needed to cross over. Swimming is not recommended because the condition was too dangerous. Strong flowing current, turbulent, overflowing river. It's I mean it's, it's not possible. They didn't have boat, and yet you must cross over. When you come into that situation, the Lord will part River Jordan for you. Amen. Amen. Go over. Clean over in Jesus' name. Do you Amen. Know that everybody went over. And the Bible didn't say they just went over. They went clean over. Amen. No accidents. No mishap. Nobody was lost. Nobody was late. Everybody arrived in time. What a crossing. And Amen. if we are, well, God told them, sanctify yourself. For tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. And we need to also do that consecrate, separate ourselves in preparation for tomorrow's wonders, in preparation for the conquest that God is providing for us. That's important. The people who are to consecrate and to set themselves apart, separate themselves unto the Lord before they can experience the miraculous process. What are they setting themselves from? They set themselves apart from defiling pollutions of the land. You are entering a land that is polluted and yet you must not be polluted by the pollution of the land. Set yourselves apart from the defiling pollution of the land. They were to set themselves apart from the unbelieving and the you know, bearers of evil reports. The Bible says the people in Jericho, they, they did not believe and they perished. Separate yourselves from those who would not believe. The people that did not believe in the wilderness, they didn't get to the land of Canaan. They, they were wasted in the wilderness. Separate yourself from the unbelieving and people who are always bearing evil reports, like the spies that brought evil reports and they perished. Separate yourself if you want to experience divine wonders. Set yourselves apart as people ready to partner with the Almighty and experience His miracle. Set yourself apart. You want to witness the wonders of God. You want to experience the miracles of the Almighty. You want to be a partaker of the mighty acts of the Lord. Set yourselves apart. Very important. 
set yourselves apart as obedient people ready to eat the good of the land. That's what God was telling them. Sanctify yourself, set yourselves apart, consecrate yourself. The consecration and separation, it worked. The following, they followed the divine instructions, they met the requirement, and it was recorded that all the people were passed clean over Jordan. By the grace of God, as we consecrate ourselves, as we separate ourselves, we also, we are going over. Amen. Amen. Crossing over to your destiny. Amen. Amen. Crossing over to your inheritance. Amen. 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 God will do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And you know, we've been in chapter 5, and we've been studying, you know, God told Joshua, make sharp knives, circumcise the children of Israel. Why? There is a Jericho ahead of you in chapter 6. Now, in the vicinity of Jericho, Israel needed conquest over the walls of Jericho in order to commence gaining access to their promised inheritance. Circumcision and sanctification were to proceed, were to proceed, were, were, I mean, to precede the battle of Jericho. At that time, the Lord said unto Joshua, make these sharp knives and circumcise the children of Israel the second time. This was physical circumcision. And I told you the physical circumcision is symbolic of the spiritual circumcision, the circumcision of heart and circumcision of ears. When God circumcises the heart internal, then that's, that's sanctification. You become obedient unto God. Stiff nakedness is gone. All the reluctance to obey God is gone. When God, when God circumcises your ears, you will hear a word behind you saying, this is the way. Walk down in it and you will. You will search for the old path. You will walk. You will not be rebellious. That's what that does. It, it was a physical circumcision that prefigured the circumcision of earth. It was a physical foretaste of a spiritual experience. Sanctification is the circumcision of heart. We've read it in the past, you know, few uh, studies that we have already done. Circumcision of the, you know, of the, of, of, of the remnant, circumcision of the wilderness generation. Israel required perfect obedience for the walls of Jericho to crumble. How shall a formerly stiff-necked people exercise this perfect obedience without sanctification? Israel would not have been able to conquer Jericho without sanctification. You know why? Joshua told them, as we go around the walls of Jericho, everybody, you keep short. You don't make any noise. You don't exchange any word. You only shout the day I bid you shout. Without sanctification. Oh, they're going to be like the like the like Lot. Joshua maybe is in front. Somebody, and you're talking about millions of people, but even the men alone, thousands of them. Somebody is going to be at the back. If I talk with Pastor me. If I talk with Pastor here. But all of them, they kept silent. Oh, it took a, a circumcised, sanctified people to be able to do that. Perfect obedience. Because some people will want to break the rule. They will want to. It's like Lord's wife. If I look back, will the angel know? Because the angel said, look not behind you. If I look back, will the angel know? There are some people that are like that. When you have a heart that is not sanctified, you want to you, you want to push boundaries. Simple obedience, you will say, well, I'm smart. They will not catch me. I can do it. That, that's what people do. For the entire people to keep silent until the day that Joshua told them, shout. Ah, they needed to be circumcised. They needed, you know, to be sanctified. Otherwise, they would not have been able to do it. And that battle of Jericho would have been lost. God knows what he's doing. There are some victories you may never be able to win without sanctification because the path will be too difficult for you to tread. Your body will not be able to cope with the requirements of the journey to get to the destination. So God says, if you are going to get to that destiny, you need to be sanctified because it's only then you can tread this path and get to that destiny. Without it, 
your body will react, your flesh will react. Eventually, you will not be able to get to that destination. And God knew that for Israel, that they needed circumcision and sanctification before they would come to Jericho. Otherwise, Jericho would be an impossible task for them. Thank God, Joshua made sharp knives, circumcised all the people. They renewed their covenant with God, renewed their, you know, their, their, their state with God. So even though it was a physical circumcision, but it prefigured the spiritual circumcision, the spiritual sanctification that we know of today. Israel required that perfect obedience. And we also will require that perfect obedience. And I'm asking you today, you have been growing in your Christian life. Are you increasing in your consecration? Are you increasing in your, you know, in your Christian life? Let me show you Genesis chapter 35. Genesis 28, as I, as I round up. Genesis 28. Let me show you a kind of a growth in the life of Jacob. When God met him in Genesis 28, in verse 18, Genesis 28, verse 18. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. That was his first encounter in Bethel. He set up a memorial. He set up a pillar and he poured oil upon that. I wanted to notice that. Verse 19. And he called the name of that place Bethel. For the name of that city was called Luz at the first. 20 years later, another encounter in Bethel. Let's see what Jacob did. Genesis chapter 35. Let me read to you verse 7. Genesis 35 verse 7. The Bible says, And he built there an altar and called the place. What did he call the place? El Bethel. El Bethel. No Bethel this time. He called it El Bethel. Mm -hmm. Who still, because there God appeared unto him when he fled from the face of his brother. When the first time he was fascinated with the place, this is the gate of heaven. But now he's more fascinated with the God of that place where God appeared unto him. Before, he called it Bethel. Beth in Hebrew is the second alphabet of the Hebrew word, B-E-T-H. It means house. El is the you know, uniplural word Elohim. El is the singular of the uniplural noun. It means God. So Beth El means house of God. El Bethel means God of the house of God. Are you fascinated with the house of God? Or are you fascinated with the God of the house of God? When he met God the first time in Bethel, he was more fascinated. This place is the gate of heaven. How beautiful. This is a place that one should dwell. Fascinated with the place. He called it better. Second time coming to better. He said, no. I remember the God that appeared to me in that place. He called it El Bethel. The God of the house of God. Are you fascinated with the place? Are you fascinated with the God of the place? But not only that, Look at verse 14, Genesis 35, verse 14. And Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he talked with him, where God talked with him, even a pillar of stone. And he poured a drink offering thereon, and he poured oil thereon. Let me ask you, in the first battle in Genesis 28, what did he pour upon the pillar of stone that he made? Oil. 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 Here in chapter 35, what did he pour upon the pillar of stone? Drink offering. Drink offering. 
and all that. Increase in consecration. Increase in consecration. Oil at that point, but now here, drink offering and oil. At that point, Bethel, at this point, El Bethel. And I'm asking you, in your Christian journey, are you making progress? Is your consecration increasing? Is your, you know, commitment to God increasing? Are you growing in your faith? Or is it just that you are saved? And you have been saved for 10 years, but you are still in the babyhood stage. And Paul is saying, for the time when you ought to be teachers, you still need somebody to teach you what are the elementary principles and doctrines of Christ. And you are, you are not fit to eat strong meat. I need to be giving you milk because you are not growing. You are not making progress. So God is asking you this evening, are you making progress? We thank God 20 years ago, you put oil on that pillar of stone that you made to remember God's visitation. What are you pouring on that new pillar you are making today, 20 years later? Is it still oil, no progress? Or is it drink offering and oil, progress? You call that place better 20 years ago. Are you still calling it better or you have moved on to call it a better? Is there a marked growth? Is there a marked consecration? Is there a marked improvement? Is there a marked, you know, growth in your Christian journey? You are making progress. You are taking steps. You are not where you were a year ago. You are not where you were two years ago. I pray that the Lord himself, he will help us in Jesus' name. You must make progress. Yeah. We must make progress by the grace of God. It's important. And this is what eventually leads to conquest and more conquest. Every single time, you know, you have met God, but when God meets you again, move on in your Christian life. Move on in your Christian commitment. Let there be an increase in the things on in the things of God, the way you handle the things of God in your commitment. Let there be visible commitment of your time. When you first of all God say, maybe you are only coming to church and you are happy, at least you come to church on Sunday. Now you have been born again one year. Is it only still Sunday, Sunday? Bible study, we don't see you. Prayer meeting, we don't see you. Add onto the oil now, add some drink offering to the Sunday worship, add Bible study, to the Bible study, add prayer meeting. Amen? Amen. Make a progress in your commitment of time. Make a progress in your commitment of treasure. Make a progress in your commitment of talent. Make a progress in your, you know, in your personal consecration. That's important. That's how we grow. It will pave a way of conquest for you. And I pray the Lord himself, he will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What have we learned tonight? What we have learned is that the divine requirements for conquest. Number one, confession and salvation before conquest. Number two, consecration and separation before conquest. Number three, circumcision and sanctification before conquest. And as we comply with all these divine requirements, I pray that mighty conquest, I pray that glorious triumph will be our portion in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Let's rise up and pray and tell the Lord and say, God, I'm ready for conquest. I will fulfill the divine requirements. The divine requirements. For divine conquest to go. For divine conquest in your family. Divine conquest in your career. Divine conquest in your personal life. Increase every way. Even this is your opportunity. Lord, I present myself. Divine conquest, divine conquest, divine conquest. The miracles of God are still available for today. Sanctify yourself. And but the Lord to, will do wonders to, among to, you. That your, your it's available. It's available, my brother. 
He's available, my sister. I want you to help me to consecrate myself, O oh God. I separate myself, O oh God, for the sins of this world. For things, O oh God, that are defiling, things that are polluting, O oh God. To consecrate myself, O oh God. I separate myself, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. O oh God, not to not to not to cause the sin that oh God. God is calling us. God is calling us, my brother. God is calling us, my sister. God is calling you this world. The this world. Oh God, You're making progress in your Christian life. You are just stagnant. Yes. What you did in Bethel 20 years ago is still what you are doing now. 20 years later, no progress, no improvement, no increased consecration, no increased revelation. You are still fascinated with the place, not the God of the place. Separate yourself tonight. Separate yourself from the defilement of the land. Separate yourself from the unserious. Separate yourself from the unbelieving. Separate yourself. There are divine requirements for conquest, consecration and separation, confession and salvation, circumcision and sanctification, divine requirements before conquest, divine requirements for conquest. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, I pray for you. Listen to this. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you because every time we come, you challenge us. Mm. You empower us. Lord. To warm our hearts with insight into your word. Tonight we are seeing again mm. the pathway to conquest. The requirements for, for conquest, for triumph. For the sinner, confession and salvation will bring him to the victory side. For the saint, the abiding saint, consecration and separation from the pollutions of the world, separation from the unbelieving that will perish in the wilderness, the unbelieving that will perish in Jericho. When we believe in faith and we separate ourselves from those unbelieving, we can be like Caleb and Joshua inheriting the land. Oh Lord, you have told us also circumcision and sanctification. There are many Jerichos before us, Jericho walls before us, that without sanctification, the journey to overcome them, we will not be able to complete it. Reaching the place of destiny will be impossible because the flesh will react. The flesh is going to, to fight against us and will not allow us to complete that journey. Tonight, O oh Lord, we are praying as many of us that need to consecrate ourselves, to separate ourselves from the pollution of the world, to separate ourselves from people that are unserious, to separate ourselves from people that are unbelieving, to separate ourselves from people that are coming to church, but they are just religious, but they are not righteous. They are in the church, but fornication is still going on. They may even have titles in the church, but their life is blemished by sin. Oh Lord, help us to separate ourselves 
from those kind of unserious people in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. When the Jehoshaphat messes himself up with Ahab, wrath from the, from the Lord will come upon him. Mm. Oh Lord, help us to separate ourselves, to consecrate ourselves unto you. People may label us, they may say our own is too much, we are too consecrated, we are too serious. Yes, only the serious will get to heaven. Getting to heaven is serious business. Help us to be serious. Help us to, yeah. be, help us to be fervent. Help us to be talented. Help us to be dedicated. Help us yeah. to be consecrated. Help us to be committed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And where we need to be sanctified and circumcised in our heart, oh God, so that the things that stop people to get to the place of victory will not stop us. Oh God, Amen. sanctify our hearts, purify our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Every kind of obstacle, oh Lord, remove it and help us to put on the new man created in righteousness and in true righteousness and holiness, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh Lord, as we fulfill your divine requirements, let great victories be ours. Amen. Amen. Let tremendous conquest be ours. Amen. Amen. Let glorious triumph be ours. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen.